Hi, my name is Lieutenant Gary Aswalt, and welcome to Grow House, Six Star, Emergency, and Tanked. Is that too many maps? Uh, have we like maxed out here? Or... Let's start things off with Emergency, which is finally a small map, not quite tiny. We're not talking about Shipman or Stash House here. On this map, you're actually able to have a passing thought before coming face to face with six dudes jumping and sliding around you like your chum in a sweat-filled shark tank. Now, for reasons unknown, the directory that's copy-pasted around the facility are actually for a completely different map. So you might be a little bit confused at the layout, but thankfully, it's pretty simple. You've got your normal three lanes, two of which are close quarters cutting through the State Disease Control Agency's headquarters, and the last one's out front through the parking lot, providing a little bit more space to stretch out your sprint buttons. On the other side is the labs, a straight hallway, but thankfully it's full of cover to hide behind and hurdle over, like these gurneys and cadaver we dipped in jam just to see what would happen. The center lane though is made a bit more interesting with the addition of a jammy vent in the bathroom that connects back to the main lobby, letting you get a jump on those pesky receptionists below at the risk of looking like you're stuck in between worlds of Mario 64. And it's actually through this lobby that you can take part in the record fastest time from spawn to engagement since they outlawed baby marriage. I think my personal favorite spot though is in the elevator back by garage spawn that uh, doesn't go anywhere and actually just serves as a respawn point, uh, but one that you need to mantle out of as a cute little gimmick. And next up is Tanked, everybody's least played map at the time of recording this. Now like most maps in this game, it's based around a central building or location whose gravitational pull attracts everyone to it. This time, it's an aquarium. But not just any old aquarium, but the Vondel Aquarium. Uh, from, uh, you know, Vondel. Meaning that if you've ever heard of a small indie game called Warzone, you should be pretty familiar with the map already. But don't think that your resurgent skills will transfer over perfectly. I mean, what is 6v6 multiplayer if not 12 people stacking after all? But also, because they've overhauled the layout and made it sunset. How romantic. Oh, but where are my manners? Let's give you all a proper tour of this fine establishment. The surrounding zoo is home to many different creatures and critters. Empty habitats. Like here is for the lions. Over here would be the crocodiles. And over here would be the snakes. Oh, oh, look at that. One did come out to say hi. And inside, we have a totally real shark hanging out with his totally real fish friends. And I know everybody's about to ask, yes, all our tanks are 100% bulletproof, which means that no matter how hard you tap the glass, the sea creatures inside will stay unharmed and your freshly purchased duck boy outfit will remain dry. Now let's take a quick visit to Grow House, the newest in the long-standing trend of adding the word house to a map name to make it an instant classic. Boy, I can't wait for Piccadilly House next season. Now if you've played Vanguard and didn't erase all memory of it through a decade's worth of alcohol consumption in an eight-month window like me, then you might recognize it as Sphere from the game's DLC season. And it's pretty one-to-one -one layout wise, with the aesthetic just being modernized from a high-tech research facility to a weed growing plant, because 420 dude, nice. In Vanguard's lore, this location was actually their way of explaining why Godzilla and King Kong showed up to fight on the front lines of World War II. But in Modern Warfare 3 now, it's instead the explanation for why Snoop Dogg and Cheech and Chong decided that 50 and 80 were good ages to enlist. Which I think is equally as absurd. Oh look, it's the Breaking Bad RV! Man, the devs are getting more mileage out of that than a 1986 Fleetwood Bounder. Grow House is definitely on the smaller side, and plays similar to Meat, but slightly less chaotic. Like instead of, oh my god, the world's on fire, we're all gonna burn to death, chaotic, now it's, 
Oh my god, the world's on fire! We're all gonna die of smoke inhalation! Chaotic. There are a few notable parts of the map, though, that make it stand out amongst all the others. Like the south side, where you can get locked into an intense mounty fight that scientists say will still be going on up until the eventual heat death of our very sun. And beneath that is the main attraction of this stoner's paradise. The house itself, whose main levels have been bombed out by the man, revealing only the basement grow room. And as such, the only ways into the basement are through tunnels and ladders from both spawns, giving the map a certain bowl-like layout. And honestly, that is the best Easter egg I've ever seen in Call of Duty. Welcome to Hadika Hotel and Suites, AKA Six Star, where the drinks are cold, the water is blue, and safety is our number four priority. Right below gold trims and convenient bar access. Located in a Dubai hotel where they've glitched out Google's rating system, earning them a six out of five stars, Six Star is just beautiful. From its architecture to its uh, a second thing. And best of all, it's set in a location we haven't ever seen in Call of Duty before. A hotel. Now this is a quick PSA because the comparisons just won't quit. Six Star is not a raid remake, okay? Even though it's very similar in vibe, they couldn't be more different. For instance, the bar inside of its infinity pool overlooking a major city is only accessible from one side here. See? Completely different map. With the addition of a pool though, Six Star makes great effort to justify the dev time that went into making swimming mechanics over the years. Even putting a hard point inside the pool itself. Turning that mode from a slippery sweat fest into a soaking wet one. Makes me think what a fully underwater map would be like. You know, like, like, like Armada, but without the Armada. Just off the pool is a bar, acting as the central station connecting all other parts of the map together. And it's the perfect place to patrol when looking for kills, or if you just want a nice soundtrack to vibe with. Beyond that, there's plenty of hidden flanking routes that you can use to your advantage if you know the right people and whose palms to jam through breakaway glass. Like this lower sky bridge that doesn't look real, but I promise you, it is. Or a similar section connecting the spawn to the security office. It actually seems like a security concern, don't it? Also, if we don't break the glass, then how are normal maintenance workers supposed to get here? Uh, and, and why do they need to get here? While still not large by any means, this map is on the other side of the community's obsession with welcome mat-sized arenas, so you'll likely run into sight lines that you may not be accustomed to here. Personally though, I like a bit of variety, and while it's not the best map ever, I still think I'd give it a solid 6 out of 10. Oh, wait, do you think that's why they call it? And that's where I'll end today's tour. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the last one that we did on every single Nuketown. And then be sure to exit through the gift shop where we are not selling drugs. Okay? Stop asking.